Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit that as this scripture is read and proclaimed that we may be filled with hope, renewal, and the salvation of our souls. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord, for yet one more opportunity for us to try to get it right. Amen. The scripture reading this morning is from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. The fourth chapter, and wanted to really square in on verse 13, but I'm going to start just a few verses before that in verse 10, just to give you a little bit of backdrop here. I rejoice in the Lord greatly now at last. You have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and being in need. And here's the verse. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This morning, we celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ most importantly, but we also celebrate our high school and college graduates and give thanks to God for giving them the gifts, giving them the fortitude, the knowledge, and the wisdom to accomplish this great feat of a diploma. I mean, it's an incredible accomplishment, and as a church, uh, we surround you with thanksgiving and praise and prayer as you start a new journey in life. It's an adventure of continued learning and experiencing life in a whole different way. Philosopher John Ruskin once wrote, the entire object of true education is to make people not merely do the right things, but enjoy them. Not merely industrious, but to love industry. Not merely learned, but to love knowledge. Not merely pure, but to love purity, and not merely just, but the hunger and thirst for justice. In other words, education and what you have learned creates a passion for that area of concern, creates a passion in your life for the people of the world, people of the nation, to use the gifts that you have learned throughout the years, whether it be high school, college, graduate, whether it be uh, continuing education, a class here and there, sets you on a new journey and helps that passion increase exponentially. And that passion also sets into motion incredible opportunities. So it is with our faith. Our faith is not merely an academic exercise. It is putting into motion the incredible love of God through Jesus Christ, or God's passion for us. To experience and to live grace, mercy, forgiveness, and share those things with the world around us. That is faith. But there is some realities to graduations as well. Because graduation and new beginnings also represent uncharted territories. No matter how many degrees you have, in services, classes, with every one of them, there are new challenges, new opportunities, new responsibilities. All along, seeing life in a wholly different and exciting way. Sometimes, I have to admit, there might be a little loneliness along the way, maybe a little feeling of hopelessness, maybe a little feeling of not being fully equipped to do the job that we are called to do. All these things, as new adventures, continue to unfold. God knows 
Life can be a challenge every once in a while, to say the least. But here's the deal. This is what Paul said. That's why I wanted to share this beginning of this text with you. Paul has learned the secret of having plenty, of having little, of being wealthy, of being poor. The secret is this. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will be able to do all things through him who strengthens you. God has called you by name. Knows you intimately from the time of your conception. Will be with you now throughout all eternity. And also recognizes that life is not always easy. And that on your adventure, God has also promised that you're never alone. You are always in the mighty arms of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, wherever that adventure may, may take you. God does not expect us to be puppets or simply to follow a set of rules. One thing different about faith than in academic education, and I don't know whether you still do this or not, but you know, in, in mathematics, the best way to learn math is to memorize the multiplication tables. Maybe that's old-fashioned, but it seemed to work out pretty well. To, to memorize this and memorize that, a foreign language is about memorization. Chemistry is about memorization. I remember memorizing the, the, the periodic table of the elements, and I looked at it a few years ago and realized that uh, a few more have been added. I guess life goes on, or I forgot one of the two. But you see, God doesn't ask us to memorize all these things because faith is something totally different. It's the acknowledgement that God is with us always, even to the end of the age, and calls us by name. That when you pass through the rivers of life, as in this glorious text from the, from the book of Isaiah, when you pass through the rivers of life, the waters are going to rise, but they're not going to overwhelm you. When you go through the fire, you're not going to be concerned because the Lord God is with you. And in one part of that text... God says, I am the Lord your God, the Holy One. Listen to this. You are precious in my sight, honored, and I love you. God, the creator of the universe, church, graduates, you are precious in God's sight. You are honored in God's sight. You are loved in God's sight. Always. All the time. Not just exam time or interview time or downtime or uptime or hospital time, but all the time. Dr. Martin Luther King, one of my favorite stories that he wrote, and he shares this in his book On the Mountaintop about a, the phone ringing over and over late at night. He was getting death threats. Nothing could relieve his fear that night. Fear overwhelmed the man. He paced. He thought about all the theology that he had learned, for he was not only a master of divinity, he was a doctorate of the same. He couldn't call on his dad. He couldn't call on his mom. In his mind, he needed to call on the one, his daddy. Dr. King was a third generation preacher. He had the call upon the one his daddy used to preach about. Power that can make a way out of no way. You see, the church had been the home of Dr. King 
for all his life. He never stepped out of that place far enough or bold enough to forge his own relationship with God. And he writes that faith became real to him that night, that night in deepest despair, that his faith wasn't merely a hand-me-down business, wasn't merely his parents' faith. And he remembered his prayer. He said, Lord, I am trying to do what is right, but I'm losing my courage. Lord, I am afraid. I have nothing left. I have come to the point where I can't face it alone. And he heard this sheer silent voice respond to his pleading and spoke to him and promised never to leave him alone and Dr. King over and over, never to leave me alone never to leave me alone. This is the gift, the secret, if you will. Graduates, friends, church, that God offers to us, which gives us the courage to affirm that I can do all things through him who strengthens me, no matter how dark the day, no matter how deep and dark the clouds, that I can do all things through him who strengthens me. God will give you the strength. God will give you the wisdom. God will give you the peace to do all things no matter how difficult the task or the circumstance. You have a foundation that will never let you down. And to the parents of the graduates, they're going to be leaving you for a little while in body. But guess what? They're going to need you. And guess what? God is going to strengthen you when that phone call comes and give you the wisdom too. So this, this message is for parents. It's for the church as well as our graduates. But grads, you have a foundation that's always going to be with you. So be convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things of present nor things to come nor height or depth nor anything else in all of God's creation will be able to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Let Jesus be your rock. Let Jesus be your strength. Let Jesus be your hope. Let Jesus be your calm in the midst of the storm. Put God through our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, at the very core of your being. And understand that all strength and courage you need comes from the Lord, especially at times such as these. You see, the true celebration of graduation is the presence of God through Christ in your life. Oh, the parties are a lot of fun. Non-alcoholic parties. A lot of fun. Enjoy that time. But truly celebrate God in your midst. The God who has been with you throughout your journey and especially will be with you on all the adventures that lie ahead and, 
And as I prayed about this message, that word adventure kept coming to the fore. It's, a, it's an adventure. Life is an adventure. And we look at life as an adventure, what we start seeing is God all over the place. Our eyes are open to new beginnings. So it's an adventure and God is with you. For it is by faith that mountains are moved and dreams are achieved. Because you can do all things through him who strengthens you. I pray that you make that verse part of your prayer life, part of your everyday walk. You have been immensely blessed. Blessed by loving families. Blessed by a loving Lord. Keep the Lord at your core May you have a mind that inquires and sees beyond the present reality, not adapting to the present reality of things around us, but seeing how you can contribute to a greater tomorrow by faith. And most importantly, if you forget everything else this morning, Hope you don't. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Have fun with the faith. Enjoy the ride with Jesus. And remember on this journey of yours, this whole church is with you and will continue to be with you continue to pray for you. Your families are with you. We'll continue to be with you. Continue to pray for you. And especially, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is with you. And you will never be alone. No, never alone. Because Jesus will be with you, always, even to the end of the age. Amen. I'd like to have for a moment the graduates stand up, all of them, college, high school graduates stand up. And for those around them, and if you're not around them, I'd like you to go over and lay hands on these, on these graduates. We're going to have a blessing. Don't be shy. I want that tie, Chuck. <laughs> Hear these words of prayer and blessing. Eternal God, bless our graduates and their families this day. May they come to know you even more completely, celebrating and witnessing the joy that comes from you. Let them know that they can do all things through you who strengthens them for the adventures that are unfolding. Be with them every step and support them when their legs are weak. O oh, Trinity of love and power, protect them wheresoever they go. Hold their families and friends in our church in your endless grace. Offer them wisdom peace, and courage as they face new beginnings. Lord, may our graduates find you in their midst at all times, forever shining the light of your redeeming grace upon their lives. May they continue to grow steadfast in faith, forgiving in spirit, and gracious in living. It is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the communion of the Holy Spirit, and in the love of God we pray, amen.